I have the pleasure of having been raised in Silicon Valley. And over time, in my role as the CEO of the Silicon Valley Education Foundation, I got to meet a lot of these individuals, a lot of these entrepreneurs, to see what they do and how they do it. One day, I got a call from the White House. And they said that the pre President Obama, President Barack Obama at the time, would like the pleasure of me, my company, which is very lovingly put, to attend a dinner at the White House. I was blown away. Now, the Education Foundation I ran was great, but there's thousands of these education foundations. There's hundreds of educators who have forgotten more than I know. Why would I be chosen for this? Naturally, I accepted to go to Washington, D.C. at the White House and attend this dinner. A few weeks later, I got yet another call from one of President Obama's speechwriters. And they said, not only will you be attending the dinner, we will also mention the work that you're doing in education and your story. Not we, the president will mention it in his remarks. Uh, growing up in Pakistan, uh, Mohammed Chowdhury and his family, uh, part of the Ahmadiyya uh, Muslim community, were mistreated because of their beliefs. Thanks to Mohammed's foundation, so many of these students are now taking classes that put them on track for college. So we want to thank Mohammed uh, to, for being such a great example. Fast forward to the day of the event. I showed up to the White House, and then this man walked over, whispered in my ear that the President of the United States will be sitting next to you. At this point, imagine my shock. Imagine how I felt that I do not belong. What I believe it is Allah's fuzzle or grace. Now, how do you describe Allah's fuzzle? There's many definitions. The one that I've heard that I was attracted to was imagine a bowl of ice cream. Now, there's one scoop of ice cream, very easy to fit in the bowl and you can eat it. Now, imagine a bowl of ice cream that has, as, has more scoops than the bowl can hold. It's got chocolate syrup, it's got frosting, it's dripping outside, it's falling on the table. Imagine that as being a less fuzzle given to you. It's much more than what you can ever imagine. It's much more. It can't be contained in any container. It's what you get, what you don't deserve at times. And when this fuzzle is bestowed upon us, it is addicting. We all want it and we all want more and more of it. And that example it holds true, I believe, in my humble beginnings to the point where I'm sitting next to the President of the United States, to many other executives in Silicon Valley, or in many of our lives as we think about our, our faith and our fortunes, how do we get ahead in this job? How do we get that next position? How do we become the CEO, the board chair, the visionary, the entrepreneur? You're asking, you're begging, you're praying for exponential returns. And the only way to achieve those is to obtain Allah's Fuzzle. So I was blessed to receive Allah's Fuzzle. The question becomes, how do you attain Allah's Fuzzle in a repeatable fashion? Because once you have it once, you want it more and more and more. There's spiritual Fuzzle. And there is this worldly Fuzzle as well. You know, you want to balance your deen and your dunya. You want it all and you want to beg Allah for more and more of it. And they manifest themselves in different ways. Let me give you a couple of examples in my life. Once I had an interview with Fox News. If you know of Fox News, it's a very conservative channel in the US. Some argue why I even go on it, but it is also the largest platform in the US at the time with the most viewers. I was, if you've ever seen these clips, they're typically about three minute clips. There's a moderator, and an anchor, and there's someone on one side of the topic and there's another person on the other side of the topic and it's almost a debate. In three minutes, you get proverbially two bites at the apple where you get to speak perhaps twice, maybe three times for about 30 seconds each. We were talking about Islam and I had made a point 
The person on the other side was a person named Bridget Gabriel. She made a point. She said... I do agree with him, but one thing I want to point out, that Muhammad belongs to the Ahmadiyya movement, like he said in the beginning. The Ahmadiyya movement is not what Muslims worldwide uh, believe that represents Islam. They are only 10 to 20 million around the world. People like Muhammad, we want more of him, of his sect, of his mm -hmm. voice speaking out. Unfortunately, what he is saying does not represent the ideology of these radicals who want to kill not only us, but also the Ahmadiyya movement as well. This is where I said the Ahmadiyya Muslim community is the largest organized Muslim community in the world, um, and we are fighting for on the on the right side of this. And and I don't think we should discard it. I mean, America has uh, five percent of the world population, yet it is a leader in the world. So size doesn't matter as much as ideology. And this was a live interview. I was in a studio. My phone started going off. I'm getting text after text from Ahmadis, non ahmadis and emails from individuals I don't even know saying, wow, that 5% answer was amazing. In a quick 30 seconds, you were able to make your point to millions of Americans. I said, that's not my answer. Hazur Akhtas guided me to this answer. He actually gave me this answer when I was lamenting a few months ago about how whenever we make a great point with, about being Ahmadi or the Ahmadi Muslim community, people come back with, you're, not, you're insignificant and therefore your answer doesn't matter and how Hazur guided me in 30 seconds to give an answer that can reach millions in a very, very articulate manner. That is an example where attaining Allah's fuzzl has direct correlation and causation by connecting with the most important man in the world, God's man in the world, and that is the Khalifa. Hazur guided me on this answer in a way that I could have never attained on my own. And his prayers, when, I, when he guided me on these answers, helped change hearts and minds of millions of Americans on the relevance of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Let me go back to my previous example about being in the White House. Let me tell that story in a different way. After I got the first call about visiting the White House, not knowing that they were going to speak, uh, the president was going to speak about me, or I was going to sit next to the president for an hour and 40 minutes, the first action I took was, wrote to Hazur and asked for prayers and guidance on what to say. Hazur not only gave, gave me his prayers, he guided me on what to say to the president. And as I was sitting, waiting for the president of the United States, who some say, again, is the most powerful man in the world, according to Hazur's khutbat and Hazur's guidance, I was reciting the Ruth Sharif. I was praying and connecting with the most important man in history, the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I had his prayers. So the man sitting next to me, maybe the President of the United States became less significant. And the conversation and the connection became that much easier. I was able to represent and connect and deliver the message of Hazur. I don't believe in coincidences and neither shall you, should you. If you want to attain a less fuzzle, you need to pray, but you also need to connect. If you want that fastest path, from point A to point B. There's many ways to get there, but to get that fastest path, you want to connect with the Khalifa of the time. You want to be able to listen to him every week in his khutbah. You want to be able to write to him and not be lazy and, and not say, oh, he doesn't have time for my letters, but to actually weekly, monthly share, seek his prayers. You have a strategic advantage in your world. The best way I know how to do that is to attain the prayers of God's man in this world. And that is the Hazur. I've been blessed to fly on a private plane or see all the success, you know, to compete for that next Apple Watch or whatever the next best car is, the next Tesla or whatnot, and to be in that race. But as a member of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, as an Ahmadi, I'm also reminded of Rabbana Atena Fid Dunya Hasnatam Wafil Akhirati Hasnatam Wakina Zabunar. To want the best in this world and the next. You don't have to have one or the other. You don't have to choose as an Amadi. I believe your true north is connecting with Khalafat and balancing your faith and your fortune, your deen and your dunya, and to attain your next level of your spiritual and 
your worldly fitness.